Say Macaroni and Cheese, written by Stephanie Kvelstad. Interior, darkness. Last year, I dressed up as Fred from Scooby-Doo for Halloween, and uh, I couldn't find my ascot, you know, that little tie thing that Fred wears. So I asked my now ex if they had seen it. My ex is like, uh, your what? So I say it louder, making sure to accentuate the words. My ass caught. My ex looks at me funny and says, uh, I think it's called a hammock. Mike reverb. Cell phone starts to ring. Get it? Hammock? Ascot? Hey, hey, no phones in the club. Interior, bedroom, morning. Light creeps in through the blinds. A cell phone is heard ringing. Gwen, late 20s and hungover, turns over in her bed. She blindly reaches over to her nightstand, fumbling for the phone. It rings and rings. On the nightstand, we see a comedy club, performer pass with Gwen's picture on it. Gwen groans as she finally grabs her phone, just as it stops ringing. Sighing, she pushes the voicemail button. Hey, do you feel as awful as I do? Probably won't be at your set tonight. Peace out. Beep! that morning when your drunk ass is hung over us. God damn it, I love macaroni and cheese. Mm. Beep. The thought of mac and cheese makes Gwen shudder. She pulls the covers up over her face. A loud squeak is heard downstairs. Gwen bolts upright. The noise amplifies. It almost sounds like a basketball game. Gwen gets out of bed, pulling on her house coat. She groans and shields her eyes from the light as she makes her way into the kitchen where a basketball game is taking place. Into your kitchen, morning. Gwen takes in the scene. It is too absurd for a regular reaction. What? What? The teams continue playing. Half wear blue shirts, half wear gray. The basketball narrowly misses Gwen's head. The near miss wakes her up from the shock of the scene. What the hell is going on? The players are silent. Gwen shields her eyes from the bright lights of the kitchen. Ugh. I am way too hungover for this Kafka-esque nightmare. Oh, I swear if someone turns into a bug. The players look at each other. A man in a gray coach hat appears. Are you the other coach? Uh, this is an impossible question for me to answer. Well, then why are you here? Um, this is my house. Unless you mean, why am I on this plane of existence? In that case, I'm trying to bring laughter into the world while feeding my ego. I'm a stand-up comedian. At least I'm trying to be. Gwen does not project confidence. Perhaps a flashback from the night before crosses her mind. A stand-up comedian. I get it. You must be the referee. <laughs> See, that explains why your last call was a joke. Okay, listen. My players deserve a fair game. They've been training their butts off. Gwen stares at the coach. He is serious. She looks at the clock on the stove. It blinks. So does the microwave. Am I dreaming? A man in a blue coach hat appears. I hope so, with the calls you've been making. Gwen looks between the two men and the players. You know you don't have any hoops, right? Silence as the team stare at her. Gwen picks up the basketball next to her. She throws it in the air and the game recommences. Ugh, what the hell, I've had worse hangovers. Into your kitchen, moments later. Gwen is making coffee while the game rages on around her. She takes a mug out of the cupboard, only to have a rogue basketball smash it. Gwen reopens the cupboard and grabs a new cup. She dodges players as she makes her way to the coffee machine and pours herself a cup. Ref, did you see that? Mm, nope. No coffee on the cot! Oh, my house, my rules! Gwen crosses the kitchen with her coffee and sits down at the kitchen table kicking over sports water bottles as she does. Gwen looks at the oven clock again. It is still flashing. She takes a sip of coffee and removes a small notebook from her house coat pocket. She begins to scribble notes into it. Ref, you're not even paying attention. Uh, listen, you can play your game, but this is a little too season four Felicity for me. I have actual work to do, and not that you care actually exist, but I need to come up with new jokes for tonight because I bombed last night and it it wasn't funny. Well, I hope that job doesn't involve answering the phone. Oh, <laughs> what? Because I'm missing calls? Yeah, good one. It is calls, right? 
to I, be honest, I don't know how basketball works. How can you not know how basketball works? That proves my theory about referees. Uh, my grasp on reality is mm, tenuous at best right now. I, I'm going back to my work and whatever is happening here is happening. O okay, I don't have time to waste figuring this out. Gwen looks back to her notebook and keeps scribbling ideas into it. Interior, kitchen, later. The gray players huddle together. Okay, we've come this far. This victory is for everyone who supported us along the way. We need to come together and pull a win for them. Yes, coach. From the other side of the room, a similar shout is called by the blue players. The teams break up and come face to face in front of the fridge. They bark at each other for what seems like ages. Gwen tries to focus on her work, but she can't over the noise. She looks up to find both coaches staring intently at her. One of the coaches throws his hat onto the ground. Ref, you're killing me here. I'm not doing anything. <laughs> That's the problem. Here. Coach two throws the ball to Gwen. Gwen looks from the basketball to the knives on the counter. As she walks towards the knives, the teams gather around her. They gasp as she picks up a knife and raises it above the ball. What are you doing? I don't know what sort of twisted hangover this is, but I am over it. I am going to murder this basketball. Then I am going to go upstairs, sleep for the rest of the day, rehash the awful jokes I told last night while praying to every god that somehow they've magically become funny. The players look at their respective coaches. The coaches look at each other. Whatever crisis you're going through, that's your own business. Just put the ball into play, right? The sooner we win, the sooner we can celebrate our victory. Gwen furrows her brow. And a spark of realization crosses her face. If someone wins, the game ends. And I can call my therapist and I can have a long chat. And you can leave my kitchen. Kitchen? Play ball! Gwen throws the ball up into the air. Interior, kitchen, later. Gwen watches the game intently. Hey, no shoving. That's called a foul. Foul? Foul. <laughs> Why couldn't the chicken play basketball? <laughs> because it was foul! <laughs> no? Bad. Uh, okay, keep playing, keep playing. The game continues. Gwen's stomach rumbles. She looks at the stove clock. It is still flashing. Uh, time out? Time out. I'll be right back. I gotta get my phone. There's no phone breaks in basketball. Uh, pretty sure you mean there's no crying in baseball? Uh, never mind. Close enough. Gwen runs out of the kitchen. The team stand awkwardly in the kitchen waiting for her. They hear thuds as she walks upstairs and a bit of muffled cursing after a particularly loud thud. Gwen returns to the kitchen limping. Son of a gun, pinky toe. Oh, I swear it looks for places to run into. Anyway, I'm ordering in. Anybody hungry? Into your kitchen later. Take out packages, litter the kitchen. The players sit together and chat as they eat. One of the players tucks into a particularly cheesy looking mac and cheese. God damn it, I love macaroni and cheese. Hey, me too. Coach is getting more and more frustrated. Can we please get back to the game? We're enjoying our meal, we're having a great time. Let's just call it. Anybody got a quarter? I have a burger. What the hell? All right, mustard side wins. Coach two, call it. Yeah, that's hardly regulation. Oh, and my kitchen is? <laughs> Coach two, you call it. Mustard side up. Gwen tosses the burger in the air. It lands mustard side up. Coach two begins to cheer. The teams yell and scream. A celebration commences. Yes! Oh, yes! yes! Oh, That's it! Good job. Oh, good job. Cut two. Interior, office, day. Claudia, a straight-faced individual in a suit, sits across from Gwen. What was the point of that story? Um... You asked me to tell you about a time when I had a problem and how I handled it. So I told you. I'm not sure you did. I meant in this reality, waking life. Yeah, you win some, you lose some. You want to know how I got rid of the teams? Presumably you woke up. <laughs> I can tell you're funny. No, actually, it's one of those cursed items. You can't give it away. It has to be passed on through a um, ritual of sorts. Gwen reaches into her bag and places a container of macaroni and cheese in front of Claudia. Macaroni and cheese? You know, 
our concept of magic words is so limited. Abracadabra, it's just the tip of the iceberg. Gwen smiles and walks to the door of the office, leaving with a wave. As the door closes, the digital clock in the room begins to blink. Exterior, office, day. Gwen whistles a happy tune as she walks away from the office. Behind her, we hear the squeaks and shouts of a basketball game just starting. The end.